everyone. I'm Sarah from Homestead Engraving Business and More. My husband Matt and I have been running our laser engraving business from our home for four years. For the last year and a half, our main source of income has been from the website Etsy. Today I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to make a listing on Etsy. Let's get started. Okay, now that we're at our computer and logged into our Etsy account, you're gonna see the shop manager on the left-hand side and you're going to see listings. You're gonna to wanna to click here and after you click listings, there is a button on the top right here where you're gonna click the plus sign to add a listing and then you should be at the page that I'm at now. We're gonna add a new listing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our photos Etsy recommends that your photos have a white background and we try to stick with the idea that if Etsy recommends it, it's something they value, so we'll try to keep with that. As you can see here, I added my first video and the quality wasn't high enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because we don't want low quality pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more here may take a while to add them all, but we recommend that you add all 10 photos and get them all filled up. There's advice here of doing it from different angles, um, doing up close items, lifestyle type photos, different scale items, and then you're gonna go ahead, once you have all these filled in, you can move these around as well, which is kinda handy. Um, then you're gonna adjust the thumbnail. You're gonna click here. This is the main photo you're gonna see on your Etsy listing. What you're gonna want is you're gonna be want your item to be as large as possible, but still being able to be seen on the screen. Um, the problem is if the item is off center, you might get something like this, and no one's gonna purchase an item that they see like this because they're not gonna know what it is. So the first way to get buyers in is by having a good photo that draws them in. Once you're done adjusting your thumbnail, you're going to go down and you're going to start typing your titles. Um, we're going to use one of our baby blocks here for the example. Um, so on the title, I'm going to start with the basics and call this a baby block. Now I could go ahead and keep um, guessing at what I think this should be labeled but the best way to get people in and buying is to kind of look what's selling out there. Um, so if I think this is maybe good for a newborn gift, I might want to search newborn gifts, search my other competitors, what they're selling, and look at some of the titles they have that are being used, and we want to include all those here. The number here is for how many characters are going to be in the listing, and you want to fill this all up. These are the way people are going to find you. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead to who made the listing. So there's a couple options here. If it's something you make yourself, you would click I did. If someone in your shop makes it, that's this option, and then another company or person. And this, is, this would be what you're clicking if you're selling vintage goods. Um, what is the item? Is it a product you make, or is this actually a supply to make something? When did you make it? Now, some of our items are gonna be vintage, so they have a special section for here of age. They also have more recent items. If it's something you make in bulk um, or a necklace you made last year, you can put that in here. All of our items are personalized, so I'm gonna put made to order. Then we're gonna go ahead and find um, the category. So they give you some advice here to type a two or three word description of your item and I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and just put baby gift and this, if I can spell it, there we go, baby gift um, and they have a few options here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in photo props and you can kind of play with around with that and see what would make the most sense for your listing. If you have something with just one or two colors, this might be great for like a jewelry listing. You might have um, something black and then it has clear um, jewels. 
I usually do keep this blank because we have a few options and I don't want um, to make it too confusing for our buyers. Then you can go ahead and pick the occasion. Um, this is great for a baby shower, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then there's holidays as well. Um, mine doesn't really fit in with a holiday, so I'm going to leave that blank. And then these are your renewal options. This is how your listing will be renewed. So it costs 20 cents, I believe, every three months for a listing to be renewed. So you can have it automatically renew, which is what I would suggest, or you can manually have it renew. Um, the cost really isn't that high, so I would um, be pretty bummed if I accidentally let my item um, expire um, by having it on manual. And then it's basically like starting at the bottom of um, the back of the line, I suppose. So then we have our physical item or digital. So digital might be um, if you are making birthday invitations that you are only going to send a digital copy of. Otherwise, most items will be physical. And then we're going to go ahead and type in your description. Now, you want to be very thorough here. Make sure you give the buyer all the information. What are they buying? What is this item? Um, what do they need to tell you? This is a great place to put your shipping information, um, just anywhere you can reiterate the important information about your item. So once that's done, um, you can add a production partner if you have another company that's helping you create the item. And then I suggest if it is something that can be customized, you have this selected. Um, oh, and then here the section is if there's a section in your shop that you want it to pop up on. So I want this to pop up under baby gifts in my shop. So if somebody happens to be looking at my Etsy store, they're going to click baby gifts and the block's going to pop up. Tags. Now, this, just like the title, are things you want to do some research on. So you're going to look at what your competitors are using. They might be calling their similar item baby block like you are, or maybe they're calling it something different. Maybe they call it baby cubes, and that's a really hot search item. The only way to find these um, tags is to really research what's out there, what's selling, um, because we're only one person and we only really get our point of view otherwise. So you're going to want to fill this up. It says there's 12 left. I think you get 13 in here. And then materials would be what your item is made out of. Um, so I'm going to add some of those important things. Sometimes I'll add things that might also be tags or search items. Um, like, let me think of one for example. Wood block other than just wood. Um, and then we're going to pick our price. Now, you can go ahead and pick your price however you wish. We usually like to pick um, a price that we would be comfortable getting um, selling an item for. And then after you pick the price that you would like to sell the item for, then you need to go in and figure out how much is Etsy taking from my sale. Um, how much is it going to cost to ship? Am I paying for shipping? Is the customer paying for shipping? What do my competitors do as far as their costs, as far as what type of product they offer? Um, don't be afraid to put your item marked above someone else's item. If it's a higher quality item, then you should be doing that. Um, so you can go ahead and um, put in whatever amount you decide here. Quantity here now, if you have a vintage item, you're probably only going to be putting quantity one. If you have something that is one of a kind or a couple of a kind, you might have a smaller number. However, our items are personalized, so we are going to put the largest number Etsy lets you put, 999, because I want to just keep this in stock. I don't want it to be listed sold out ever. Um, so that's why that's up like that. A SKU is just um, for your own benefit. So um, say I keep white and gray blocks on the shelf and this is going to be just my white blocks and I want to label them A1s and then my other listing is going to be a, oops, A2s. So you can go ahead and do that here if you wish to do so. You always want to have the customer have the availability to click and ask you 
to restock an item unless it's something vintage I guess I can see where you might want to select no in that case variations now there's a lot of different ways you can use this so there are their saved options so in our case um, we have let's see a gray block shown and a white block shown so let's say those are our only two options we can go ahead and save that and we're going to have these options to select for the buyer if we change our mind and to get decide to get rid of gray we can always click this little toggle button and gray will disappear you can edit these and maybe you charge more for gray because the gray paint um, costs more or something along those lines. So you can go ahead and change that there as well. There's other options too, quantities. Maybe you only have a limited supply of gray. So you're going to go ahead and change that one or you're sold out of white and you want that listed sold out but you want people to be able to see it. There's a lot of different ways we can play around with the variations. You're allowed to have two of these. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one. If none of these options work for you, you can create a new variation here. After you have these done, oops. Oh, and I did something I very often do. So you might notice that I typed in three inches, but it didn't pop up. So we're going to go back to edit variations and we're going to see, I forgot to click this little add button. So, so silly. There it is. Now, if you are offering personalization, the easiest way for buyers to do this is to turn this on. This is a fairly new feature. And, <coughs> excuse me, the buyers will be able to see this box and type in whatever you want them to see. So this particular item that we sell has a lot of personalizing, so I'm just going to kind of throw in some easy examples. Um, I could type something like, please include the whole name first middle and last um, and just I could leave it simple as that and then they know to type this here the largest character limit is 1024 um, the smallest character limit would be um, well you can turn it off and then it would be zero or one maybe I just want to know include only the letter um, that way they can only type that one thing here rather than adding this long message to you there is an option for them to add a note later and you don't want to get that confused and that be um, how you're personalizing their item so you can also have the option maybe you're selling jewelry and they can pick the large letter on their necklace um, or no letter at all so in that case you might want to put that this is optional um, and so maybe you could put something like include only the letter if wanting a letter and personalization optional so if they don't want one and they leave it blank then you're good to go in that case and then we're going to go ahead and go shipping I do have some shipping settings on here but I really do prefer to enter custom shipping options for each listing um, it just it seems more clear this way that I'm doing it correctly as things change so often. So I want them to calculate the cost for me. This is going to get me the most accurate cost. Um, the fixed costs I rarely use. And you're going to go ahead and type in your zip code. Um, select your processing time. They kind of have their saved options. We like to use a custom range just of three to six business days just because, you know, Got to have something a little different. And then you can choose where to ship to. So if you only want to ship within your country, you can certainly do so. If there's a certain area you're not comfortable shipping to, you can take that off. Um, we ship most of our items internationally, so this is just fine. We do, however, have an item that um, we aren't able to ship to some places due to their laws. So make sure you research that and know that and those items we do not ship internationally. Then you can go ahead and check your shipping service options. We just have it set that small items will ship first class on Etsy. It's items up to 16 ounces. Um, and then they will go priority mail unless a buyer chooses to pay more to have this priority mail express or 
um, etc. The first class international can sometimes vary in weight and I don't know off the top of my head if that is kind of a fixed weight or if that varies by country so you'll see that come through though on your orders for sure. Um, free shipping if you want to ship your item for free um, you can ship it free to your country or free to the whole world. Um, make sure you uh, look at shipping costs if you're doing these things that you are making money <laughs> and not just losing it. Um, you can charge a handling fee if you want. I would not charge more than a dollar or two if you wish to do this. And then we're going to type in our item's weight. So um, again, anything under 16 ounces is going to ship first class. So um, our blocks are up to 16 ounces. So it works perfectly where I can go ahead and do that. And then we're going to enter the size of the item. So I'm going to go ahead and, oops, it's not working there. All right, so I'm going to enter the size of the item when I have it all packaged up. And it's going to give me an estimate of the cost to an area close to me. So it's telling me Chicago. It's going to tell me somewhere a little bit farther how much it's going to cost. When I'm all finished, I'm going to see this at the very bottom. Um, if you haven't done a listing in a while, if you're just coming back and doing this after a while, this is new. So um, pay attention. Do you want to advertise this listing? Do you want to um, pay to have the listing advertised? If you do, you can click here and then you need to make sure to look into your advertising and see what you are paying to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click no, not right now until I research it more because I can always turn that on. I can preview my listing here. It's not going to let me preview it because I'm missing so much information. So it won't even let me check that out. You can save it for later. I do believe you have to have at least one photo in it to save it. Um, and then you can publish it when you're ready. And it costs 20 cents to put your listing up and make it live. And you'll be all set to sell on Etsy. All right, well, thanks for joining me for setting up an Etsy listing. I'm Sarah from Homestead Engraving Business and More, and I'm glad you got to see me again. Have a great day.